In this problem, we assume that we have to make a square, this is my square, so that the diagonal that cuts across is 10 centimeters, and we want to know how to do this. So again, the question is, if you know the diagonal is 10 centimeters, let's say on this square piece of origami paper, how long are the sides of the square piece of origami paper? Right? In other words, you're in charge of making the paper, how big should it be so that the diagonals are 10 centimeters? If you're ready to solve this, um, pause, and then when you're done, check your work against mine. But if you're ready to hear how I solved it, keep watching. So what would I do? Well, I know we have a square right here, so I'm going to label the two right angles that help me see that this diagonal does in fact cut our, our square into two right triangles. So I'm going to highlight this bottom half as the right triangle that we're going to, going to examine. And I'm going to label uh, to help me start breaking this down. So this could be A, and this is B. And this is a square, so in fact, A and B are equal, right? So let's just write A and A, right? The square, every side is the same. So in the Pythagorean theorem, we have A squared and B squared equals C squared. Well, since A and B are equal, we could just rewrite this as A squared plus A squared equals C squared. Oops, not O squared, C squared. And when we combine these two, a quick way of writing that is 2A squareds. That's just saying the same thing. And that equals C squared. And now we're ready to solve. So, so here I'm going to take an algebraic approach, and then I'm going to, on this side, show you my, I guess, common sense approach to solving this problem. They, they both say the same thing, but maybe just in different formats. So what do I do here? Well, what's c squared? Well, c equals 10, right? This is our hypotenuse right here. So c squared equals 100, right? 10 times 10 is c squared. And that equals 2 times a squared. So think about this in general. 2 times some number gives us 100. So then it's true that, that 100 divided by 2 will give us the mystery number. And think about it in a simpler term, if it was 2 times 3 is 6, well then 6 divided by 3 gives us 2. Or 6 divided by 2 gives us the mystery number, which would be 3. So here it's a little bit more complicated, but we're still using the inverse property or the inverse operations of division to solve for multiplication. So 100 divided by 2 is 50. And that's going to equal a squared. Now, the inverse of an exponent is a square root. So we want to find a. a has to equal the square root of 50, right? Because whatever that is, if we square it, we get 50. Think about uh, a simple square root, like 25. What's the square root of 25? Well, the square root of 25 is 5, because 5 squared gives us 25. This is a little bit tougher, because notice, if we try some whole numbers, like 8 squared, gives us 64, and 7 squared gives us 49. 50 is really close to 49, but it's between these two whole numbers. So in this case right here, this is irrational. This is as close as we can get to um, an answer for this problem. We could simplify it a little bit, and I'm, I'm going to show you how to do that, but really, we don't know what the exact value is. It's irrational. How can we simplify it? Well, we can say that it's the same thing as, as 25 times 2. And a property of square roots, which I'm not going to cover too much in this video here, is that we can say, oh, what is the square root of 25? Well, it's 5. And then we can't hammer down the square root of 2 anymore. So this is the same thing as 5 times the square root of 2. And all I did there was rewrite 50 as 25 times 2. And then take the square root of 25, which I can do. That's 5. And then when I take the square root of 25, it's out of the square root sign. And then we take the square root of 2, well, that's just the square root of 2. So what does this mean? Well, all this tells me that the length of the paper should be about 5 times the square root of 2. Oops. Which is not friendly, but if you were actually trying to cut this, you would say, oh, is it decimal in terms of centimeters? That would be something a little bit above 7. Because remember, look how close 7 squared is to 50. It's much closer than 8 much closer than 6, of course. So this decimal, it's about the square root of 50, or 5 times the square root of 2, same thing, is about 
um, about seven centimeters, right? A little bit above. Now, intuitively, how would I solve this without all this algebra? Well, again, I know I have two sides, so a squared and b squared. They give me a diagonal of a hundred, or ten centimeters, excuse me. So the 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 diagonal squared is a hundred, and I knew these two things are the same thing. So I thought to myself, well, what number plus itself, or times two, gives us a hundred? What's well, fifty, right? So 50 plus 50 is 100. So a squared and b squared are both 50. So what, what is their actual length? What's the square root? Well, it's just a equals b, which equals the square root of 50. And again, I just I could reduce that to 5 times the square root of 2, which is something you might not be familiar with, that process. It's not too difficult. Um, but it's just using some fundamental properties of square roots. So there's a, a, a couple ways to look at this, but notice that even when our hypotenuse is a friendly number like ten, you can't. You're not. You're not guaranteed that to get. You're not guaranteed to get side lengths that are nice uh, whole numbers as well. This often happens in the Pythagorean theorem, especially with square roots. And when you explore with certain triangles and shapes, look at patterns that happen, um, especially when you know um, maybe two legs are the same, or if you know given certain angles, what's happening, those patterns will help you explore much richer topics with the Pythagorean theorem. Alright, hope that helped.